This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. State Senator Laura Reinbold was on an Alaska Airlines plane this week, and all of a sudden, it's in the news, and we wanted to get into the details, and she was kind enough to call in this morning, this Tuesday morning, and of course, the first question I have, Laura, Rick has a question too, do you absolutely hate Alaska Airlines now, and Rick is asking... Well, I was just wondering if I could get first dibs on your Alaska Air Mile. <laughs> Yeah. Not going to. Are, are you done with Alaska Airlines or not? Tell us what happened and why it's headline news. Well, absolutely not. I'm not done with Alaska Airlines at all. I think they're still a very, very good airline. I think they have some of the finest pilots, and uh, I think they do Alaska a good service overall. So I absolutely am not against Alaska Airlines, and absolutely I will fly on them. Tell me what happened, please. I saw your post and I know you were not thrilled, and we know each other off air enough where we've communicated by text when something's a foul or something seems improper. My hunch is you wouldn't have posted that if you didn't feel that you were wronged in some way. What exactly happened? Where, where were you flying? You know, what was the time of day? What was the circumstance so people get it? Because I haven't read the ADN article yet, to be honest, and that came out this morning. Well, ADN, as you guys know, is, is very biased against conservatives, um, even more moderate United States Senator Sullivan said hell froze over when they endorsed him. I mean, they're not even fair to the, to the you know, more moderate Republicans. So, and, and by the way, I'd like to point out the United States Senator Dan Sullivan uh, just has a, a really good post up uh, at Must Read Alaska about he was told to put his mask on when he was speaking and reprimanded them. And somehow he's a hero. Um, so, and I, he's a hero for me for doing that, but, but I did post that last night. So there's going to be a lot more rub, a lot more to this story. And I, first I want to explain that I took an oath to defend and uphold the constitutional rights, including the civil rights, inherent rights, and bill of rights. And I do believe they are being treaded upon by this governor and by these local mayors. And that's why I take this very, very seriously. The reason I am pushing back is because the families with special needs children, those with medical conditions that are contraindicated to wearing masks, those people are showing me the size that they're getting in their eyes, the lesions on their faces, and a lot of the social awkwardness of these masks. I vehemently disagree with this mask policy, and I could debate that it's doing more harm than good. And so I'm I'm just saying in general, but my place is not the role of medical. My role is to defend and uphold what I believe to be civil liberties. So... Bottom line is I vehemently disagreed with the mask policy, and I still wore a mask on, on the plane. Even though they knew I was uncomfortable and, and not happy about it, I still complied. The, the, the attendant said I was compliant, and they said I was pleasant, and I actually have it on recording. But the bottom line is, because I knew that something something like this crazy might, might happen, um, all as I did is I posted my personal opinion on my personal page, and ADN exploited my, my personal page. And there, therefore, now I've made it private. Sadly, I've made it, made it private now. But when I was eating on the, on the flight, a gal basically said, you have your mask down too long. And she, she basically raised cane about this. And I was, just, I was just eating and drinking for a short period of time. But the bottom line is... Was the gal a fellow up. passenger, oh. Senator? Was, yeah, this was a passenger. Okay. This was just a really, you know, a Karen, basically. And then apparently when I got off the flight, she complained. And so then I got met when I was boarding my next flight that I had been noncompliant. And it was none of the airline hostesses said a single thing. It was based on a false accusation from this person you know, that decided that she was now the rule maker and going to tell me how long that I was allowed to have my mask down when I took a bite of food. So that's what triggered this. So then I got met at the gate with a supervisor person that came in with three or four people and inspected the mask that was over my face and my mouth. It was a double material mask. She said, it does not cover your chin. And she asked me to put another mask on. And I was like, wow, that doesn't make any sense. Why do I have to have my chin covered? So anyway, then I went ahead. They let me board. I sat in my seat. They brought me another mask and asked me to put this mask on. That's where the rub was because I was being asked to wear two masks. 
And I told them, I put it on, and I said, I cannot breathe. And they said, it doesn't matter. I said, is there any medical exemptions um, for any pa- anybody on, on the plane? And they said, there's no medical exemptions, period. And I said, well, what if people are contraindicated? They said, it didn't matter. A policy is a policy is a policy, and they were going to enforce it. That's where the rub was. I ended up taking my mask off and putting their mask on that said Alaska Airlines on it, uh, you know, it, it, in the package. It was a, it was a plain blue little little mask, but I did wear it, and I was I, I did, even though I, I disagree with the policy, I did it. Um, but but that's at a very high level what happened. I'm looking at AlaskaAirlines.com right now. Alaska Airlines strengthens face covering policy: no mask, no travel, no exceptions. This was from Seattle, August fifth, two thousand twenty. PR Newswire. Quote, as part of continuing efforts to keep guests and employees safe, Alaska Airlines announced today that all guests must wear a cloth mask or face covering at all times when at the airport and or on board Alaska aircraft. Effectively, August 7th, all Alaska guests age two and older will be required to wear a cloth mask or face covering over their nose and mouth with no exceptions. If a guest is unwilling or unable to wear a mask for any reason while out the airport, they will not be permitted to travel. If a guest refuses to wear a mask after boarding their flight, they will be suspended from future travel. And it goes on. Folks can look that up. Do you think, because I know you've debated this on social media, do you think that airlines should let it be optional to wear a mask? It sounds like you do, or do you think that there should be mandates for that? Well, first of all, we're, we're on a slippery slope. One, the, there was no convincing evidence that healthy people should wear masks. I can't find any research before March of 2020 that healthy people should be forced to wear masks all day. I think Alaska Airlines policy is extraordinarily discriminatory against special needs, those who have a difficult time wearing masks or those where masks are contraindicated. Do we believe that corporate America should be telling us what to wear and now take our health into their hands? If so, why are they selling sugary drinks? Why are they selling potato chips? Why are they selling liquor? I mean, when corporate America is able to start dictating what we wear or what we do not wear, it is a very slippery slope. In addition, it, are they, is their you know, who, who their hostesses are on the flight, are they more important than a medical provider that has issued a contraindication to a patient? I say no. Some lawyers are saying they're practicing medicine without a license. It's a very, very serious issue. But the bottom line is, is do we want corporate America, you know, telling us what, what to do? Well, let me ask this. In regards this. to the math. November 10th. Well, in answer your question. Okay. The bottom line is I believe that, you know, if they want to ha- offer mask flights, they should do, be able to do it. But I believe they should also offer, you know, optional, mask optional on flights. We're I talking with State Senator Laura Reinbold, Eagle River Republican. I was looking up right in advance of your call, cdc.gov, and that Center for Disease Control and Prevention, updated November 10th, so less than a week ago. It says here SARS-CoV-2 infection is transmitted predominantly by respiratory droplets generated when people cough, sneeze, sing, talk, or breathe. CDC recommends community use of masks. And it goes on. Then it says the source control to block ex- exhaled virus. Multi-layer cloth mask block release of exhaled respiratory particles into the environment along with microorganisms these particles carry. And it gets into the microns and the levels. So do you think that's not accurate, or are you saying that? Because well, I just, CDC I'm always interested. Well, extremely, extremely controversial. They say one thing, and then they flip and say another, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. So the bottom line is, let's just say in general, 1% of Alaskans have COVID at any given time. So then 99% of the people should be forced to wear masks, you know, healthy people. When there are contraindications, people are getting sized. People are getting pleurisy, which is an infection in the lungs. People are getting, um, like, like I said, uh, face lesions, pleurisy, size in the eye. There are contraindications to wearing masks. And I just don't believe that healthy people should be forced against their wills to wear cloth face coverings when, let's say, roughly 99% of them don't have COVID. It's just, it's just to me, illogical. But I am not a doctor. So basically, but I did take an oath to uphold and defend constitutional rights. I believe they're inherent rights, inalienable rights, and the Bill of Rights. 
And that's what I'm focusing on as someone who took an oath to the Constitution. I'm going to stand on the oath to, to the Constitution. I think we get down a very slippery slope when, when corporations can mandate. Thanks. Her name is State Senator Laura Reinbold, and I tell you, she definitely knows how to state and argue her her sentiment there. Laura, I appreciate the fact that you joined us this morning, and we will see what happens. I don't know if Alaska Airlines is going to change their policies from this. You've definitely delineated that you appreciate the airlines, but you don't appreciate that policy. We will see how this unfolds, and hopefully we can talk to you before or during the state legislature next year again, okay? Okay, and yes, and I would like to say that, that, that they did say I was respectful and compliant. So I and I just I just really want want people to understand there was no harsh exchanges at all between any of the agents. Well, we appreciate the fact that you you took the time to come on and and talk to folks. We'll make a YouTube video of this so people can listen to your explanation. And I think that might shed some light on how you feel about this. My friends, stay safe. State Senator Laura Reinbold, always a pleasure. It's the Tom Anderson Show. Good morning.